brain. Amen. My top of my message is make your mark. You see, a lot of times when people talk about making your mark, you see, you think about a fight, right? You see, if me and you were to go in a fight and we were to get down with somebody and you were to punch somebody in the face and you were to cut them up and all of a sudden they start bleeding, you would say, I made a mark on that guy, right? You would say, man, I cut him up. I made a mark. And I guarantee you, all the days of that person's life, he's going to remember that scar you made on his face. Come on, somebody, right? He's going to remember those times that he wakes up in the morning, he goes to wash his face or brush his teeth. He's going to remember those times that, oh, man, I remember that scar. That was a, a scar that, man, I don't, I don't ever want to be in that situation again. Well, the kind of mark I'm talking about tonight is making a mark for Jesus. What do I mean by that, you may ask? You see... You gotta understand that we are extremely we are extremely valuable. You have been destined to live in victory here tonight. You have been destined to overcome and destined to leave a mark in this generation. You see, my first point tonight is we want to live in victory. Come on now. We want to live in victory. The, the definition of victory is a success or triumph over an enemy in a battle or a war. What's the, opposite of, what's the opposite of victory? It's defeat. You see, the children of Israel were right here, right? You're reading this passage of scripture, all of chapter 17, and you read on, and you read on, and it begins to say how the Philistine, the giant, would come, and he would come day after day, week after week, and he would call out the people of the living God. And all of a sudden, the Israelite people would begin to become scared. And they'll become, become, they begin to become fearful of, of that giant. It's like for some of us tonight, the giant is creeping up outside of our window. Maybe the giant of failure. Maybe the giant of insecurities. Come on now. Some gay girls may wake up in the morning or gay warriors to wake up in the morning. They look in the mirror and they're like, I don't like what I see. So what they try to do is they try to put on a lot of makeup on somebody, right? They try to do is get a packing on a whole lot. Come on now. I just I'm talking about the gay warriors. I'm not talking about the gay girls. Come on, somebody. Right? You try to do things, pluck your eyebrows and do different things and make yourself look different. And you're like, oh man, I gotta look fresh today before I go to school. Come on now. Right? And you're like, man, I wanna be, I wanna be, oh that's gonna be the Mr. Cool guy, right? I want to look good for this picture I'm about to put on Snapchat. Hello, somebody, right? I want to look cool for this picture that I'm about to put on Facebook tonight. I want to look cool for this picture I'm about to put on Instagram tonight. I want to see how many likes I could get. Come on, now. Right? And you want to see how many likes you could get, but really, in the inside, you don't even like yourself. In the inside, you don't even like what you see because too many times your friends, your relatives, your mom, your dad may tell you, man, you're never going to amount to nothing. You're never going to be nothing. You're just an ugly person. You're just a person that'll never make it. You're just a person that'll never amount to nothing. That's why you're still in the home. That's why you're still doing this. That's why you're still doing that, because you'll never be nothing in life. So what happens? You try to drown yourselves with other things, with drugs. Come on now. We're still a victory outreach, right? We're still reaching the, the cesspools of society, right? Amen. Don't let them make them fool you. Amen? Don't let that nice shirt fool you all of a sudden. Amen? For me, I was never a drug addict or an alcoholic or a gang member, nothing like that. But my mom used to have a $300 a day drug habit of using heroin, shooting it up in her veins. Messed up individual. She was on her way to hell. Come on, somebody. My dad was a self-righteous individual that he was all messed up, drinking alcohol. He was in the military. He had a career. He had everything going on in his life. But nonetheless, in the inside, he was hurting. In the inside, the giant was creeping out of his window and said, what are you going to do now? The giant was right there looking at him. And all of a sudden, the failures of the world, the failures of life, the failures of people saying that they weren't going to do it. You see, I thank God for my mom and my dad answering the call of Jesus. I thank God. How many of you can thank your parents for answering the call of God upon their lives? It's thanks be to them that while you're still here today. It's thanks be to them while you're able to worship God today. It's thanks be to them while you're here to stand in liberty and say, Man, God, I thank you, God, for 
for saving my family's life, for rescuing my family's life, that I'm able to stand here and be available and faithful to you. Or some of you tonight may say, man, I'm still living a life of chaos. My, my, family, my family doesn't go to, to school. My, 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 my families don't go to church. My family's all messed up. I don't know if anybody can reach them. And you're here today, and you're standing today, and you're here. I'm here to let you know you're in the right place, young man. You're in the right place, young lady. Oh, you're in the right place here tonight. You see what? Before God's going to do it through them, he's going to do it through you. He's going to do it through you more than ever before. But you got to understand more than ever before that your victory is right around the corner. That your success is right around the corner. That God's going to do something special in your life. And it's right around the corner here tonight. You see, we will fail at times. I'm sure each and every one of us have have someone that, have someone down, come on somebody, that's someone that we had let down, right? I remember one time in my life, back in 2005, I was in the UTC, amen, the Urban Woo. Training Center. And we had a UTC alumni that's been in the UTC, Woo. amen. I was there for about, a, I want to say about a month, if that. And I remember being there all by myself. I remember being there and I just felt like something inside of me wasn't going right. And I remember being there and I say, man, God, I don't know if I should be here or not. Maybe this ain't for me. Maybe this is for everybody else. Maybe the calling of God is for everybody else. And I remember being miserable in my life. Have you ever felt miserable? Begin to think right now the lowest time you felt. Maybe, maybe some of you may have felt that before you came here tonight. I remember feeling miserable by myself. And I remember getting my stuff, packing it up, and I told my director, I saw Pastor Chris. I told him, I gotta go home because I gotta go to the doctors, right? And the whole time in my mind, I'm plotting this whole way to leave the UTC. And I told him, Pastor Chris, I gotta go. This ain't, you know, I gotta go here, I gotta go take care of that, this and everything. And I told him, I gotta go do this, and then it's all right, bro, we'll see you in a couple days. And mind you, in the UTC, they never really do stuff like that. They're like, oh, bro, you tough it out, okay, man? You know what I'm talking about. You tough it out. You go through the punches and the bruises. And I remember being there at home for those couple of days. I'm like, man, I don't want to go back. Right? I don't want to go back. And I remember a couple of days went by. The UTC's calling my parents and telling them, what's up with Joel? Is he coming back? And my parents are like, well, he went MIA. He's missing an action. Come on, somebody. That's like some of us, right? Missing an action on a Sunday morning service. Come on now. And all of a sudden, I went abandoned ship, and I didn't show up back to the UTC. And I remember during this time, I felt lonely. I didn't even want to go to church anymore. Hello, somebody. Have you ever felt like that? I, I felt disgraceful because I've been washed away about $3,000 to go to the Urban Training Center, and I've been washed it all down. $3,000 is a lot of money. Hey, man, if you're trying to find money to go to the UTC, that's a lot of money to not, you know, and I remember being there, and I didn't want to go to church. And I remember one time going to church, and I was sitting in Sinner's Row. How many of you know, us know where Sinner's Row is at? In the back of the church. I know somebody, right? No offense to whoever's in the back. <laughs> but I remember sitting in the back. And at the time, I had a girlfriend. I know somebody say, well. Hey. Tell her the name of well. Hey. Or as the Spanish like to say, Santo. 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 <laughs> My God, right? All of a sudden, I had a girlfriend, right? And all of a sudden, I didn't want to go to, I was just there sitting in the back, getting Mr. Cool Guy. My dad preaching a message saying that one day we're going to do this, and one day we're going to have a men that are going to rise up, and we're going to take cities. And inside of my heart, there was, a, there was something compelling within my spirit. Because I already knew from when I was a young man that God called me to take the city. I already knew as a young man that God called me to be a pastor. And God called me to do great exploits for him. But I was in the back seat. I was right there just chilling. Just chilling. Just chilling. I was right there posted in the back. Come on, somebody. Right? I was just there. My dad was preaching. I was like, yeah, whatever. I heard this message 20, 30 millions of times. How we're going to take the world for Jesus. <laughs> right? Right? How many PKs we got in the house, right? You, you hear those messages all the time. We're going to take the world. We're going to take Vegas for Jesus. You're like, yeah, yeah, I hear this tons of times. Right? And 
And I remember being back there, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God began to compel, began to tug at my heart. Because the Bible says when you raise up your kids and the things of Him, right? All of a sudden, there's a seed that's been dropped in already. That when you go to the world, that when you're even at a party, come on somebody, when you're at a party, all of a sudden the Spirit is what's drawing you back. The Spirit is what's drawing you back in. I remember being at a party one time, come on now, all of a sudden PK trying to go out and act crazy, come on now, you know that lifestyle ain't for you, right? We try, I tried to go to a party one time with my friend. Back then I'll call him my homeboy. I'll go over there, we'll go to a party, and we'll just be chilling. He's like, man, let's go, let's go act crazy, and there's some girls over there. I was like, man, let's go, all right, those girls are crazy. <laughs> I was like, you know, anything is go. And I remember being there and the music's going off. And I was like, man, this is tight. And then I see the young man to the left of me, and he was fighting with his girlfriend. And I see another person on the side of me, and I noticed that they were hurting in the inside. And I begin to remember those times of being at an altar call. Those times of being broken before God, even though I felt defeated, even though I felt that I couldn't come back to God. I remember at that time at that party, God said, man, I want you to come back. I want you to come back to me because I called you by name. I have called you to come to worship me by name. I called you, I set you apart by name. And I remember being there and all of a sudden the spirit of God compelling me. And I remember going to church the next day and my dad preaching another great message as usual. And me wanting to say, yes, I want to stand up. But inside of me, I didn't want to stand up. Have you ever felt that before? Right? You know what happens? Your heart begins to pump really hard. Well, that's at least for me. It was pumping hard that day. And it was like my heart wanted to punch through my chest. Right? And I remember being there and I was like, man, God, help me. And then, my, and then it was one day on the New Year's Eve service. There was a man that was up there, and he was, he wasn't my, it wasn't my dad, it was another man, one of our other uh, licensed ministers that we have, and he was like, man, I believe today that God wants to call some of you. And I was like, and in my heart, I was like, man, God, I believe you call me back. And I stood up, and they called me at the time to go up and give a testimony, and I was like, I, don't, I, was like, I don't know what to say. I told, I told them up there on the stage, I was like, I don't know what to say, but I know God's called me by name. And today I want to come back. I want to come back to Jesus. Because I know the lifestyle, I know the world paints a good picture. But I know Jesus is what's going to give me eternal life. I know Jesus is the only one that's going to be able to satisfy my soul. I know it's Jesus that is the only one that is going to be able to come in and fill me up. And fill me up more with everything that he's got inside of him. You see, it's Jesus that wants to fill you up tonight, young person. It's him. He wants to fill you with his everything. But too many times, too many times we think that we're, we're living a defeated life. You feel defeated because maybe your football team lost this weekend. Hello, somebody. Come on now. I'll be a witness. My team lost this week. Amen. The 49ers, that's my team. Amen. Come on now. That's my team. My team. I woke up. I went, I went to sleep that night, not even wanting to look at sports center. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I was so bitter. But nonetheless, I felt the still the joy of the Lord inside of me. Amen. But nonetheless, I felt defeated. Number two, how about we need to overcome? We need to overcome. We overcome the enemy in prayer. Got quiet. Mm -hmm. We overcome the enemy in prayer. Yeah. It's yeah. not just about the hype. Come on now. It's not just about the kumbaya, it's not just about the dancing and the jumping, yeah, that's cool. But that's not going to keep you. Hello, somebody. Come on, young person. You see, what's kept our leaders and our pastors and our elders and our founders was birthed in prayer. With the reason they were able to take cities, the reason they were able to take continents, the reason they were able to reach other drug addicts and gang members for Jesus was because they were in prayer. They were saying, man, God, I need more of you and less of me. I need more of your power and less of me. I need more of your strength and less of me. I need more of you, God. I need more of you. You see, on Luke chapter 10, verse 17, verse 17 through 19, reads like this. It says, the 